Okay. We've looked at these um, tables before to demonstrate uh, the difference between relations, functions, relations and functions. According to definition, which of these would be a relation? Well, relation is any paired um, group, so we tend to call those groups numbers, but any pairing of numbers, and all these have pairings of numbers, so these are relations. Basically having input paired with output. Next, which one of these three are functions? Well, to be a function, you have to have one input for every, I'm sorry, one output for every input. One output for every input. Let's take a look. Put this one here. Does one have more than one output? No. Does two have more than one output? No. Does three have more than one output? No. This one is a function. The next one. Does one have more than one output? Nope, it's only four. Does two have only one output? No, it's only five. And three only has four as an output. This again is a function. This guy right here, one has two outputs. One has an output of four, and then one has an output of six. So this one is not a function. It's a relation, but it's not a function. Next, which one of these are one to one? Well, this guy is out of the running, so we can only check these two because f needs first be a function. Well, this one fails at being one to one because if you take the inverse, you're going to get input 4, output 1, input 5, output 2, input 4, output 3, and you see that the inverse produces different output. There, and this one, 4 produces 1, 5 produces 2, 6 produces 3 as an inverse. This one is also 1 to 1. There's a second way of telling whether something's one to one without seeing the actual points. We can look at the graph. It's called the horizontal line test. Let's take a look. Okay. Here's a relation. First, must see if this is going to be a, a, a function or not. But to, to tell if something's a function, we use the vertical line test. What the vertical line test does, it strikes your graph and looks at points. And you can make rough estimates at points. Let's say we hit um, 2, comma, 3 there. And here we hit, um, let's say, 2, comma, sorry, that should be a negative 3 and let's say 2 comma negative 5 for that. Well, just the fact that we hit two points that have 2 as an input but different outputs lets us know that this may be a relation but it's not fun, but it's not a function. Here, if we send a vertical line through, we only hit one point at a time. And so what we have, let's guess that at 2 comma, let's see, no, sorry, negative 2 comma 3. So, vertical lines do not give us two points there. So, this one is a relation that has to be a function. Now, if we use the horizontal line test, we get two points again. Let's say this is negative 5 and negative 2. And this point here, let's say it's um, 3 and negative 2. Okay, reversing these numbers right here, a negative 2 comma negative 5 and a negative 2 comma negative 3 lets us know that this would not pass being a um, one to one function because these are the inverse values. Okay, so this is definitely not one to one. This graph, on the other hand, passes the vertical line test and horizontal line of test. So it's a relation, it's a function, 
but it's also one to one. Next, we're going to learn a property that will test to see if a function is actually the inverse of another. The property is this. If you take a function and compose it with its inverse, the output of that composition, that composition will be x. Again, a function and its inverse, when they are composed together, will give you x. If you do not get x, then you'll know that these two were not composites. And you can also check this by taking f inverse composed with f as well. And again, you should get uh, x. Let's take a look. Question. Are these inverse functions of each other? If so, I can compose them and the final result should be x. So let's check it out. f composed with g is the same thing as the function f using g as an input. Using g as an input means we're going to use 5 halves x minus 3. Well, what does this look like? This is the function f, which is 2 fifths, inputting the function g, 5 halves x minus 3, and then plus 3 here. Okay, now I want to distribute the um, two-fifths here and here, and we'll get x, and we'll get negative six-fifths plus three. And then when we add these by getting common denominators, let's see, 15 over five, and we end up with um, four plus five, which is nine, This is certainly not x. Therefore, we can conclude that g of x is not the inverse of f. Okay. Next, we're going to do a problem that really is the inverse. OK, this is our second problem. We have the function f and the function g. And we're wondering, are these inverses of each other? So we'll take f compose with g, which is f, where g is an input, which means that f has 5 halves x minus 15 over 2 as an input. This says that we have 2 fifths, there's 2 fifths, and then the x is replaced by 5 halves minus 15 over 2, 5 halves x, should I say. And when we distribute this, I'm sorry, plus 3. And when we distribute this, we're going to get x here. And 2 times this will give us uh, minus 3. Okay. And finally, the plus 3 is still on the outside. Those two are going to cancel, leaving us with just the x. Since um, the composition of f and g gives us x, we can conclude that g is equal to the inverse of f. g really is the inverse function. Let's try another example. Here I want to know if g is the inverse function for f. So we'll do a composite. 